Hello everyone, Frank Tastic here, and welcome to Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And this will be my first look at the new title update that just released a few days ago. Now, technically, this is more of my second look at the new update because unfortunately the video that I recorded where I was playing the new update for the very first time, that video file became corrupted. So <laughs> I am having to attempt to redo that video. But I suppose the good news about that is I already kind of have an idea of what to look at now. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the settings. If you play the game for the very first time after the new title update releases, you have a bunch of these yellow things popped up on some of these things up here i've already looked at it obviously but the ghost experience parameters you already know that i play extreme difficulty and elite tactical difficulty settings you already know that if you're a fan of my channel but if you look at the settings for elite tactical settings some of these things have been adjusted so main weapon slots for elite settings is one which was normal in the past bandage quantity is several which I think that was normal risk of injury always which was normal but this one syringes heal injuries which is turned off if you select the elite tactical difficulty now if you turn it on then it will show that it's custom instead of elite but I always play elite, so whatever the elite settings is, is what I play on. Health regeneration is none, ammo loss on reload is on, but also Darkest Night. Darkest Night is a setting that was added in this last update, and if you select elite tactical settings, this will automatically be turned on. And of course, if you turn it off, then it goes back to custom. But again, I play on Elite because that's just how I play and that's my personal preference. Now there's a few other things added in these settings and I think it was the aim assist controller right here. I think what they added was this assist area and crosshair and magnetism. Uh, I think that's the new thing but I have always played with aim assist turned off so this doesn't affect me at all. If you do play with aim assist turned on then this might affect you and you can change these settings. But for me, I've always played with aim assist turned off, so it doesn't affect me at all. Some people have also wanted to know what my cursor menu settings is. Uh, for right now, it's 60. Sometimes I turn it up to 70. Sometimes I turn it down to 60. 60 is part of the lowest I go. Uh, cursor friction is default, all this stuff. Um, if you want to pause the video and take a look at these and try to add it to your settings, you can but this is pretty much what I play on. Uh, my basic sensitivity is turned off and I use the advanced sensitivity. As of right now, the X and Y look sensitivity is 85, but sometimes I do turn it up to 95 and even 99. There have been a few times where I had both of them turned up to 100, but I would say 85 is probably the lowest I go. When I turn it down lower than 85 to like maybe 80 or 75, I just feel like it's too slow for me. But 85 is normally where I keep it at, but sometimes I do turn it up to 90, 95. Uh, the acceleration is 5. I don't touch that. I leave it at 5. First person view is at 70 right now. 70 is probably the medium. Sometimes I turn it down to 65. Sometimes I turn it up to 85. But 85 is probably the highest I turn it to, and 65 is the lowest. But as of right now, 70 is what I feel the most comfortable at and then the acceleration for first person view is two uh aim sensitivity for third person is 70 again 70 is not what i normally leave it at 70 is just where it is right now sometimes it's 65 sometimes it's 85 but right now it's 70 because that's what i feel the most comfortable at and the acceleration for it is two Sensitivity for sniper scopes is 65. I normally leave it at 65. I might turn it up to 68 or turn it down to 62, but 65 I have found is the good middle ground for me and it has zero acceleration. The controller vibration is on, but honestly, I never really notice when it does vibrate. So, I mean, I could turn it off. I I have nothing to really say about vibration. I just leave it on because why not? Uh, left stick dead zone and right stick dead zone is none. Driving look sensitivity is 50. I think that's default. Uh, ground vehicle camera axis is off. Drone look sensitivity is 35. Sometimes it goes up to 50. Sometimes it goes down to 30, but 35 for right now because that's just what I like. Helicopter sensitivity is 50, which I do think is default. Airplane look sensitivity is all default because honestly, I don't think I've ever flown an airplane except like once or twice. You don't really see those 
much in this game. Also, my image calibration uh, is all default and the graphic mode is resolution. I have messed around with these two settings, graphic and resolution, and for me, it just seems like resolution looks better compared to graphic fidelity. And that's pretty much all I have to say about my settings. Uh, the reason why I showed that, I know some of those settings were added in this new title update, but I went ahead and showed a bunch of my other settings because I do get a lot of people asking me what my settings are, and even though I did explain that I do change my settings majority of the time, that is what I'm playing at right now. So extreme difficulty, elite tactical settings, dark mode is on, syringes don't heal anything. Look at my gadget wheel. I actually don't have syringes on my gadget wheel at all because I rarely ever actually get into a firefight and if I'm planning to do something pure stealth, I don't expect to get injured. But with syringes not being able to heal you if you get actually injured, you can't use a syringe, you have to use a bandage. I have a bandage in case I get injured because syringes ain't gonna do anything, so everything else is pretty much what I plan to use majority of the time. I am a little disappointed that I had to remove my binoculars because I actually use my binoculars probably far more than I do my drone. And I probably use my binoculars far more than I do the breaching torch, but I feel like having the breaching torch on your gadget wheel is useful. I kinda wish they did the breaching torch as a gadget that you don't have to have on your gadget wheel. I wish it was like as long as you have one in your inventory, then you can walk up to a fence and breach it with the breaching torch. I, I just feel like the breaching torch is one of those gadgets that you don't need to have on your gadget wheel. Because all you do is select it and then go up to a fence and breach through the fence. I feel like that should just be like an automatic thing as long as you have one in your inventory. Nonetheless, I'm not Ubisoft. I also have Intel grenades on my gadget wheel. If you're a long time fan and you have watched majority of my videos, you would probably notice that I have really never ever used these Intel grenades. And I used to not even use Singshot drones. I only started using these like maybe a few weeks ago. But um, pretty much I have been playing this game <laughs> for a full year. In almost every single video, I never really used the Singshot or the Intel grenade. I guess after all this time has passed and me taking down every single base in this game, with stealth without using those gadgets, I guess I'm finally to the point where I'm just, I don't care. Main reason why I never really used those two gadgets is because I was always trying to play realistically, even though it is a video game. I just felt like those two gadgets would break that. Okay, but yeah, the main reasons why I never really used those two gadgets was because to me, it felt like it was breaking the realistic immersive feel that I was trying to play with as the player. But like I said, I'm to the point where I don't care if I use them or not because I have proven myself to be able to take down every single base without using those. And now since it's been over a year since I've started playing this game, I'm just to the point where it's like, hey, it's in the game. The timeline that this game is supposed to take place in is like, 2035 it's supposed to be futuristic shit you know there's drones flying around so they're in the game they're gadgets they are useful might as well just go ahead and start using them so if you're someone who wants to use these gadgets but feel like someone's going to say oh that's not realistic fuck what they say and just play with whatever gadget you want to play with that's all i can say i mean a lot of people play the game with the entire hud on so the fact that i have the hud off except for a few things uh, I feel like it's pretty good. Anyways, looking at this mask I have on, you actually, this is a brand new mask, and I think it's the only new cosmetic item that they added that you can get in Maria's shop. It's very cool. I would say I'm a little disappointed that you can't wear a helmet with it, but at the same time, I guess that makes sense since the NVG um, skull cap is on top of the mask. But the mask itself, I wish we had that mask alone if you look at this mask and then look at the other masks you know it it doesn't it just doesn't seem like it's the same fabric right it just doesn't look like it's the same fabric and i would say this one is probably the only one that's close to it but it's still not the same and i really wish and i hope that ubisoft adds this mask by itself so you can wear this mask and you know, wear a helmet with it and stuff, because I actually like the mask, it's a pretty cool mask. Now what they need to do is add like the skull uh, symbol on it, you know? But I do want to say, since I am having to redo this video, you know, my first look at the title update, 
Once I recorded that video, I did go to Gollum Island and I started to take it down. And the Panther class is the first class that I'm doing to try to rank up to rank 20. So I already got it to rank 12, I think. Uh, yeah, I already got it to rank 12, or at least I'm on rank 12. So I already done a few of these. But the new update, apparently, you're supposed to increase. You're supposed to be increased damage and stealth. I don't know how true that is because I'm still going to go for headshots like I always do. But yeah, so I'm just going to attempt to take this base down stealthily, and test the stealth mechanics, and see what happens. I'm also using the MP7, which I haven't used the MP7 in a very long time. But I'm a little disappointed on how the stock is supposed to be extended, but when you equip it, it it's not extended. I'm kind of disappointed in that. The honey badger does the same thing unless you use the honey badger brown. But yeah, so let's continue. I do have my AI teammates on because a lot of people actually do request for me to play with them on. So two shots to the chest while in stealth kill that guy. So the whole increased damage while in stealth, a lot of people assumed it would be the same like it was in Wildlands, you shoot someone once in any body part and they would die. It doesn't seem to be like that. So that was two more shots toward the torso for this guy. So what it seems like, instead of it being like three, four, or even five shots, sometimes it was five shots, it's like two shots. But I am using the MP7, like I just said, and the damage for it is 23. So if you was using a weapon that had a higher damage output, it might be one shot and it would kill them. But I'm going to continue moving this way. I'm listening for any sound cues. I'm looking with my eyeballs. I'm not seeing or hearing anybody over in this area. But that doesn't mean that no one's not over here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anybody or hearing anybody. Someone could be in here. I'm not seeing anybody. Not hearing anybody. Yeah, no one's in here. But yeah, the damage output while in stealth does seem to be increased, but it's not one shot and they're dead if you shoot them in the leg. And I'm kind of glad they didn't do it like that, like it is in Wildlands, because it was super unrealistic and I honestly hated it. They got two, two shots to the chest. I can't imagine doing anything else. It's a job. And there's these two guys. So he seemed to react just about the same speed as they did before this update if you shoot someone right next to someone else. So that doesn't seem to be changed. And remember, darkest mode is on. So it is going to get pretty pretty dark. And I'm also noticing that my NVGs isn't as bright as they used to be. There's also a sniper up there in one of those silos somewhere because I just heard him say something. I could probably just get one of my AI teammates just do a, a cheeky shot wherever he is all right he's right there Maneuvering to the target I'm not seeing anybody else up here Ready, boss. Done. Done. all right he's down it was kind of weird because it sounded like fury was gonna take the shot but I think Vosley actually took the shot fury is equipped with a SMG no wait I think fury's equipped with the m4a1 tactical <laughs> And I have vastly equipped with a sniper. Just moving, looking, listening. Oh, I, who are you? you would actually rarely see anybody in these uh, warehouses. We're not gonna find shit. But I do hear people on the other side of this wall here. Yeah, this guy's right here. I hear footsteps over there. I hear a voice over there, which is this guy. That's actually three people right there. I'm going to throw this bullet. I want to try to get this guy inside here. I have noticed that the bullet actually bounces. It will bounce once and then bounce twice. So far from my testing of this, they would go to the first bounce and then they would turn and go to the second bounce. I don't oh, know if that's true. Just so far Sorry. with my experience I'll with this bullet sure throw, that is what they do. The bullet throw act doesn't even show a radius either. But yeah, he should walk to that first sound, like that first bounce, and then turn to that second bounce. 
but he didn't. Nothing here. What are you doing? I'm moving to another sector. So maybe, <laughs> maybe this guy didn't do it because the bounces was actually pretty close. I don't know. And I'm not saying that's how they will react. I'm just saying that so far with me testing the bullet lore, that's how they did react. But it's pretty interesting either way. It's, it's a very useful gadget. I will say that. So there's like two people out here. I don't need to move out that door. I need to move out this back door here. Oh my god, my teammate. Let me go first, man. Alright, so someone's coming around this corner. I can probably get him to go over here. Follow the laser sight. Wait, wait, I, I heard something. It's weird. I'm gonna check that out. Follow the laser, man. Yeah, looking around. I want him to go over there. I got nothing so far. Yep. Now he's dead. This guy doesn't care. He didn't see him die. I'm gonna throw it over there. Now he's going. Definitely Nothing. Because I just broke your nose. I'm gonna bring this guy over here. Take him down right here. I don't think anybody's gonna be walking this way. Alright, teammate. Thank you for reminding me. I'm not going to, though. <laughs> Alright, so I do know there's like two, three people out here. I see these two guys. And there's the third guy right over there. Back up, so I'm not so close to the edge. Also, with your, um, if you open up the, oh, wrong button. If you open up the gadget wheel, instead of having to press Y to go to the order wheel, if you're looking at your gadgets and you look at the bottom of the screen, you see those uh, orders. You can actually just open up the gadget wheel and then hit on the D-pad to tell your team to do something instead of having to go over here. They still have it over here for some reason but to be faster with it you can just hit on the d-pad instead which i think is very useful and glad that they did it that way Copy, boss. Moving there. get my t here, boss. team to take that guy out That's there we go those people are dead bossly so far i've only done two uh, AI sync shots and Vosley has done both of those so I don't know if they have if they have it where Vosley does the sync shot first I don't know I could be wrong now I did see a sniper up there yeah he's right there so I'm going to throw my recon drone up real quick to see if there's another sniper in there, there is might be some intel here. there's a sniper right here there's a sniper right here Gonna get my team to take these two guys down. Sniper acquired. Okay, go sleep. Both are down. Solid work. Also, if you tell uh, your AI teammates to uh, sync shot someone, Nomad actually responds to it now. I had nightmares for months after Afghanistan. It's dirty, dirty work. I just wish I didn't love it so much. What can you do? So this guy died with those first two bullets, but I think one bullet hit this guy in the arm or something. But those rooftops are clear. I'm also finding it very interesting that when you come across something like this, if you are playing with like no HUD like I normally play, the only reason why I have these icons on is because I was playing Gollum Island and I had the stuff on so I can find the crates. I, I really want to find the crates on Gollum Island to get like the rewards and cosmetics and whatever else. So that's one reason why I have this stuff on and then I had to come back to the main island to redo this video. But if you play with those icons turned off like I normally play, it's very it's very useful I I would say because now your teammates if you get close to one of them, your teammates will say something like oh you need to we need to get all the intel in the area or whatever. Used to as soon as you entered the base they would say it one time and then they won't say it once you got close to another one but now it seems like every time you get close to one even if you already found another one 
they were saying, which I think is very useful. Also, I'm hearing footsteps from what sounds like inside here. I'm gonna move to this side. I'm not seeing anybody. All right, so I only see that this one guy crossover. Getting him to come over here. Now, I noticed you can't actually throw it like right at your foot. So if you do, it's just gonna bounce like this. So it bounced right there and then hit right there. I think that's about as close to your foot you can get throw it. Searching for some shit in the pitch black. All part of the job. Now shoot him in the leg. One, two. Still two shots in the leg, killed him while in stealth. Gonna move in. Clear the rest of this warehouse. Not seeing anybody. Clear over here. I'm hearing uh, vocals come from this direction, so I'm just gonna continue moving around the backside of these warehouses and get this scale credit. Nice. I don't mind having those icons on, to be honest, because there's a lot of times where I'm just running through with no HUD and I just miss those uh, those loot crates. I would say, what, what? What is it? I guess it doesn't matter really if you play with HUD fully on or HUD fully off. I just like to have it as immersive as I can, even though it is a video game. So the one thing I would never turn on is marking enemies because that, for one, that would just make it way too easy for me when it comes to stealth. But for two, I just, I, me personally, I don't want to play with the uh, marking There's enemies no on. So it sounds like this guy's talking to himself. I didn't hear anybody else respond to him, but he is moving in my direction. So I'm assuming he's going to move right through here. And if he does, I'm probably just gonna come up and knife him. And I was right. Now I'm looking, making sure there's no one else actually here. I don't see anyone. So he's dead now. Now it sounds like the only vocals I'm hearing is coming in from that direction, southwest. I still have a C4 planted on that uh, generator so I can blow it right now if I wanted to. I'm not seeing anybody in here. What do you want? I guess, yeah, dead body was found. Blowing this generator. So, kill these two guys. I don't know what body was found. Yeah, it could have been this guy who was found. I don't know whose body was found. But I do know that there is still at least one enemy somewhere around here. I just don't know where. He's not giving off any sound cues. But I'm going to check the generator because I did blow it so that explosion should attract the enemy over there. And I'm actually hearing a footstep. Yeah, I'm hearing an enemy footstep around here somewhere. Yeah, it's this guy right here. And now the base is clear. I still don't know what body was found, but I guess it doesn't matter because even when a body gets discovered, you're still technically in stealth. The only time your stealth is completely broken is when they actually detect you and start shooting at you. That's when your stealth is, is completely broken. But that was that, and this is Darkest Night Mode. My NVGs are not as bright as they used to be before this update, and if you turn them off, it is pretty freaking dark. Now you may be saying, oh it's not that dark. Well, the moon is out and there's no clouds blocking it, and realistically, you would have some light with the moon shining down on you. But it's still not as bright compared to if I turn darkest mode off. Off. And this is, I don't know if you can notice it in the video, but me playing and looking at my monitor screen, it is a lot brighter. My MVGs are freaking bright as hell too. So if I turn darkest mode back on, it's a bit more darker. It, honestly, it just looks like 
when you turn it on, the contrast at night just gets like amped up. That's what it seems like. The contrast gets amped up and the brightness gets turned down. Either way, it does feel a little bit more realistic. When I was taking down Gollum Island, I was running through the island to get to one of the uh, bases and it started storming, it started raining. So the moon was actually being blocked by the storm clouds and it was freaking dark as hell. I couldn't really see much. Even with my NVGs turned on, I couldn't see much at all. So I would say <laughs> darkest mode is I guess as close to being realistic as they can make it. Now I don't have Rebel support or Terminators turned on for this. I will turn those on for a later video. So what I'm going to do now is just move to... So what I'm going to do now is go to a base where a drone should be at. No, you can't switch these I'm actually noticing this for the very first time but yeah you can't switch these so okay so I'm at the bivouac I'm just going to switch my uh, primary weapon to something else speaking of weapons and paint and everything like that they did add this clean and renew paint thing from my understanding a lot of people was complaining about how their paint would their weapon paint would deteriorate it would you know look you know pretty used and they didn't know how to renew the paint or anything like that so I just want to say this whole clean and renew paint is not new it, it was in the game before this update all all they did was add this option right here to do so it would clean and renew the paint but before this update all you had to do was if your weapon was if the weapon paint was you know wearing off or anything like that all you had to do was hover over the color preset and press Y and it would renew the paint and clean the weapon at least from my experience it did renew the paint I don't know if it actually uh, cleaned the weapon but it did renew the paint so a lot of people is like I guess a lot of people just didn't know about that because I even had comments in my video asking me how to renew the paint and I was like all you have to do is hover over color preset and then press Y but since this weapon doesn't need to have a paint renew or anything like that it just says reset to default but this thing wasn't exactly needed to be added into the game just people didn't know that you could renew the paint by just pressing Y while hovering over the color preset but it's here it's in the game cool whatever now the moon is still out there's no clouds blocking it but see it's still pretty dark obviously you're going to have light from the moon I mean that's just realistic and my NVGs aren't that bright but like I said, I suppose this is just as realistic as Ubisoft can make it. And honestly, I'm s still glad that they added the darkest mode into the game. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hit this Red Viper Outpost. It's a wolf base. But this base normally has like three drones flying around. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I turned the drones off. Let me, let me look real quick. War parameters. Yeah, drone presence is... Is... So drones in camps and wild, wild means free roam, is off. So the the so the drones that should be at this base should not spawn in. I will dive more deeper into the whole drone, Azrael, helicopter stuff, and even the Terminator and Resistance stuff in another episode. I don't know if I've said it already, but this looking at the new title update will probably be like a two or even a three part series. This one is just a first look, trying to cover almost everything I can in this one video but I know I'm not going to be able to do that that's why it's probably going to be like a two or three part series so pretty much what I'm trying to show is how easy it will be to take down wolf bases now if you have drones turned off I'm gonna land over here on this side of the base I did switch my primary, but everything else is still the same. There's a sniper right here, I think. If there is, I'm not seeing him. At least he's on the other side of that. Yep, he's right there. He's down. So yeah, there's like no drones here. So this, sh th like I said, this base normally has like three of those flying drones just flying around the base. And now since there's no drones, this base should be very easy to take down. 
if you do everything correctly anyways that guy's down not a big fan of being in the light like this I'm just making sure there's no one like looking over here before I move down I'm not seeing anybody look on thermals not seeing anybody that could be a possible threat as I move down I know someone's in there but I don't think they can see me from over here so I'm going to probably move up and move left to this base so if I look at it on the map what I'm probably going to do is move and just move around the base gotta keep my eyes and ears open so someone's over here because I can hear them I just don't see him yet there he is he's dead his guns just flopping around Someone is up in that tower. I'm just moving around, moving around. I'm hearing a lot of vocals coming from the southeast, but I'm not seeing or hearing anybody come from this direction. So I just need to still be cautious while I move. Make sure I'm not walking by anyone. They just spot me when I walk by. Because I'm wanting to get this guy. This one is a actual sniper. Now he's dead. I'm concealed in this bush. So if someone walked up, they wouldn't see me. I hear someone like right on the other side of this rock though. Gonna move around. Actually shoot this light out. Because as long as you're in the dark, they it's hard for them to spot you. I mean, everybody should know that. I also don't know with Darkest Mode being on if it changes the way the enemy will spot you. Like, I don't know if the timing of them being able to spot you or the distance for them being able to spot you is the same as if Dark Mode's on or off or if it actually affects them too. But I kind of wish that if you turn Darkest Mode on, the enemies, or at least some of the enemies, would have NVGs. Still don't fully understand why they haven't given NVGs to the enemies. Let me get this guy to come over here so they do they do have some new dialogues added to the game but it seems like it's not perfectly coded so sometimes their dialogue will overlap another dialogue this guy's down Gonna continue moving on the outskirts. I'm not seeing or hearing anybody else around me. Your AI teammates are still kinda random with their movement patterns. They just kinda move everywhere. There's one more guy up there I need to take down. He is a rocket launcher. I would advise being very cautious on getting your AI teammates to shoot a rocket guy because they will still they could shoot them in the in the uh, rocket pack and they just explode <laughs> so yeah just kind of be cautious if you get your AI teammates to shoot a uh, rocket guy because they don't really aim for the head I hear someone in here I see that guy I'm gonna throw a inter grenade just be safe Alright, so he is in here by himself, but he's over there by that front that front opening, so I want him more over here. Can't hurt to initiate a search. I just want him to come over here. No threat ID. Expanding grid. A little bit closer. You know what? That's fine. No threat ID. What? <laughs> That was unnatural. That was super unnatural. He sh 
a shot before he even detected me. I think that might be a bug. I've had that happen one time before, before this update, where you uh, come up on someone and they won't even detect you and they just shoot. Cause it looked like he shot in the very beginning of that knife animation, so that's definitely a bug. Anyways, there's still no drones in the area, so finishing this base off is uh, still going to be pretty freaking easy to do. But it's kind of good for them to get into this alert state right here, because I actually want to see if they fix the alert state in this game. Because used to, if they would go into an alert state like this, they would kind of just bug out and get stuck. And they would just get stuck in this alert state, and then they would eventually walk somewhere, and they just wouldn't move anymore. So I'm actually very curious if they actually fix that in this update. So I think I'm going to just kind of wait a bit. Okay, it seems like they are cooling down. They're calming down in a way. So if they go back to their normal positions, then that should mean that that bug is fixed. Uh, so they are moving. I think it's just two guys. Three. Yeah, there's just three left. So they are moving. They're probably going back to their normal positions. So, so far, it does seem like that little bug is fixed. They're not just getting stuck. Because what... What they would do, they would just go to wherever like a shot was or explosion was or whatever and then they would like climb up on random things and then they would just stand there. And that's all they did, they would just stand there. And you know, they would literally bug out. And it would be super annoying. But yeah, it definitely looks like it's, that's been fixed. And my teammate is not getting detected. <laughs> Another reason why I don't like playing with AI teammates because that is so immersive breaking. But whatever. Moving on. Oh. Ah, Slay your throat, man. Alright, so I think. Yeah, one guy. Yeah. That's what I thought. So this guy Nothing here. Continuing search. So he probably Yeah, he didn't even notice this guy was dead. That's it. All good. So he I guess well I mean he is in a very dark shadow. And he probably the wolf probably walked out and didn't even look in that direction. And he probably spotted the body when he turned around like that. But he probably saw that body. He probably didn't even see this body. Because that body's being lit up from the moonlight. This body would be very hard for him to see. So I think he spotted that body. But still, I'm kind of confused on how he didn't spot it as soon as he walked out. But whatever. So this place is clear. Again, I'm actually pretty glad that they got into that alert mode because ever since I've been playing the new update I haven't gotten into a combat I haven't gotten into open combat or anything like that so them doing that is very interesting because now I know that at least from that one encounter that bugs fixed which is pretty good now that dude shooting before he detected me that's not good I wonder what ha would happen if you are at a base and you literally are looking at a drone and then you just turn it off I wonder what oh wait no it, it doesn't work like that oh I forgot whenever you change a world parameter and you hit apply the changes the game will reload I forgot about that I only did it once and the only thing I did was turn the drones off. I want to see if I can get it to be like a stormy night or something like that. 2147 should be 1047. I think the game, they can actually get nighttime around 11. No wait, 2147 is 947. I don't know why the hell I thought that was 10. Uh, so this place should have a drone there. Because every time I came here in the past, a drone was flying around. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah, there it is right there. So all I need to do is come over here. And I want to take it out. And see. There's the generator. I wonder if you sing shot drones can still take drones out. I didn't see them say anything about that in their um, update. 
information. I don't know where my helicopter is, but I guess I don't need it. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, I don't need it. We're probably parachuting majority of the way. But before the title update, you could take out drones with your sink shot. Also, before the update, drones would spot a dead body from like miles away. Like the drone could be all the way over there and I could kill this guy and the drone would just like, not immediately, but it would spot the body after like a few seconds. It was very annoying. Get this guy to come up here. So I hear that drone. There isn't shit out here. So before the update, that drone would probably spot that body. But I want to see, I could probably, probably get my team to sync shot this. Interesting. So yeah, even so used to before this update in case you did not know if you took a drone out Even with it landing right here the, you, Before this update you could take a drone out and it could fly all the way over there and explode And this base would still go into a alert state and with that alert state bug They would just stay in the alert state Sometimes they might come out of the alert state if you got lucky, but majority of the time they were just staying in that alert state and it was very annoying. But now it was taken out and landed on the roof so it shouldn't get spotted, but also the explosion did not alarm any of the guards. And this guy is actually pretty close. So that is nice to know. When now knowing that information, I could probably just play with all the war parameters on classic and still do fine if you want to turn drones and stuff off you can just i don't think i will also remember this mark 17 assault put has a 42 damage output so i want to see with this high damage output if i shoot this guy once while in stealth if you kill him so remember that mp7 only had like what a 27 i think it was like a 27 damage output so let me look at this guy and shoot him in the chest no, it's still just two. I was kind of expecting this weapon to do like one shot. I don't think I can shoot this flight. No, that's kind of... What if I just unload on it? Nope. I'm, I'm a little disappointed <laughs> that uh, this weapon still only still takes two. But at the same time... I guess I can understand because then everybody would probably be using a weapon like this while they're trying to do stealth and just getting those one shots to the foot and that's very unrealistic but either way even if it did do that I would still probably just go for the head because that's what I do baby All right, so I gotta remember there's two snipers up on this roof I definitely don't want to kill this guy right there because he would probably die and just fall off the roof and then people walking by on the ground would spot the body. Same with this guy. I think I could take him down and it would be alright. Nope, nope, no! Damn it, told you. His body fell off. So now I got to kind of readjust my plan for that. Come around here. I'm not seeing or hearing anybody around here, but I need to secure this dead body. I'm not hearing anybody in there or seeing anybody. I don't really need my MVGs on. Uh, there's this two member patrol right here. They might spot the body. Actually, they might not because the body might... Well, yeah, they probably would still spot that body. Uh, so these two people's body right here, actually, I should probably move their body. But it's not that big of a deal right now. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to be walking around to spot those bodies, but there is someone in here on the first floor. Because I I can see their light. What are you doing here? I can see their light shining through the wall. 
Hey, oh, there's these two people. No, I need to move around here, so I, because I need a clear shot. But those like small rails in the way, that's kind of annoying. So what I'm going to do is throw this. Hey, did I hear that? Where the hell that? Sweet shot, ghost lead. That was an accidentally accidental <laughs> second shot. All right, so those guys are down. There's still that second sniper on the roof. Just moving around, moving around. He's down. I see this one guy. No, he's dead. I'm trying to see that sniper. I actually don't see that sniper at all. There's people up there on the helo path. There's that sniper. He's dead. Moving around to the helo. Uh, so there's a couple of people here on the helo pad. One guy right there. Sink shot. Sink shot. Sink shot. So this bald guy. Uh, ignore that one. Take that one out. Alright, so they all should be dead. I'm hearing vocals over there. The generator is over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just move to the generator. Or move up in this direction in a ways. Okay, so I see that guy. Someone's inside there. Uh, so no one's over here by the generator, but this is pretty open right here. And there's that guy. But he's dead. C4 on the Jenny, moving around. He's down. Throw an EMP on this light. Hearing. So there's these two people. I have a really big headache. Just. Alright, so. I think everybody's down. I'm trying to listen. I'm not hearing any more vocals or any type of sound cues from any other hostiles. So I'm gonna blow the Jenny. I think everybody's dead, but I think there was a drone operator up here. Yeah, because this guy right here I killed was a drone operator. So sometimes the game still, even though you kill the drone operator, sometimes the game registers that the drone's on their back is um, a threat so I got to try to get a shot on his back I can't get a shot on his back oh damn your face got fucked up cuz I mean he still has these two drones on his back so the game's like oh there's still enemies in the area even though there's no way these drones would go active oh my god I just need to get a shot at the freaking drones so this base is clear. I'm just trying to destroy these drones so it would act clear. <laughs> Land on your back. There we go. No, All right, there you go. <laughs> See, the game registers those drones as a threat even though the drone operator's dead. So if you're trying to do a perfect clear on a base and there's a drone operator and your character is still in that ready pose where, you know, it the game where it makes you think that there's enemies still around even though you can't find anybody, the generator's blown, 
find the drone operator just get him to a point where you can shoot the drones that's all you need to do you just need to get him to a point where you can shoot the drones and then once you destroy those drones then it's um the base should be clear like this it's very annoying that it's coded like that but because it should be as soon as the drone up already dies then those those drones shouldn't be active but i guess it's whatever but i think that's going to be it for this video i highly enjoyed making this video i hope all of you enjoyed watching this video i did try to cover majority of everything or at least a little bit of everything in this video that was released in this title update and again i did have to redo this video because unfortunately my very first look at the um title update those video files was corrupted but i will dive deeper into the terminators being turned on the resistance being turned on etc 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 and of course you already know i have already recorded some videos of me taking down golem island solo so those will be releasing soon but i hope everyone enjoyed this video click the like button if you did click that subscribe button if you if you are new to the channel and you want to see more content from me if you would like to support the channel even further consider becoming a patreon or a channel member link to the patreon website will be down in the description below and i hope everyone has a fantastic day